Hey yo, what is up? My name is Ishan. You're probably busy, which is perfect because on this channel, we like to keep things short and sweet. No fluff, just quick and to the point. So in the next few minutes, we're going to be going over some of the major things that you need to be aware of and looking for when Nat reports its earnings on Monday, August 11th. So make sure you've subscribed because we're so, so close to 1000 subscribers and I keep these videos super short and value packed so you don't have to waste 10 to 20 minutes of your time. So make sure you've subscribed and let's clock in. <laughs> So currently, Nat stock has been trading in the $4.50 range for quite some time now. In fact, we call the exact bottom at $4 multiple times on this channel. And if you bought, you would be up a solid 10% right now. So just to go over the numbers real quick, Zax is expecting Nat to post quarterly earnings of 28 cents per share and revenues are expected to be 88.19 million. But honestly, revenue shouldn't be a huge concern because we already know that 75% of Nat's fleet was booked at an average TCE of over 50k a day. And so they've definitely enjoyed a quite solid quarter. So now that we know that this quarter is obviously going to be a blowout and they're going to make a ton of money, the first major thing to be looking for is any signs and news on Nat potentially upgrading their fleet. Currently, Nat ships are in compliance with IMO 2020, which mandates the use of lower 0.5 sulfur marine fuel oils from the beginning of this year, which is perfectly fine for Nat because their ships are fully compliant to run on less than 0.1% sulfur content. But Nat, let's be honest, has an extremely old fleet with most of them built in the early 2000s. Every five years, these sort of ships have to go through an inspection, which costs a million dollars plus. And after 15 years, instead of every five years of getting the inspection done, they then have to get every two and a half years done. So right now you're looking at a company with an aging fleet that's reaching almost the end of its lifetime. And with older fleet comes more problems and more headaches. Obviously they can't just upgrade all of the ships and get new ones right away because they take a lot of years to come. But the thing with older ships is that you can charge the same pre premium as newer ships can. Comparing Nat and Euronav tanker rates from the report in May, we can see that Nat was earning about 44k a day while Euronav was a staggering $65,000 just because they have newer and better ships. All across the industry, frankly, Nat is significantly lagging behind its competitors in terms of how much money they can charge because their ships are pretty old. So any update on the update of their ships will be very important to look for. The last and super important thing to look for is Nat's guidance. As we can see, tanker rates have been crashing as OPEC has significantly slashed production to prevent the oil glut from getting much worse. This combined with the fact that oil demand isn't expected to return to normal levels in 2022 has made the need and demand for tankers drop and thus rates have dropped as well. But as we can see, winter is a time when rates tend to bounce. This is because winter equals cold, which equals people needing to stay warm. People need to stay warm and so the demand for heating oil, which is refined from crude oil, the demand for that goes up. But obviously the most key and important thing I'm looking for is if they're planning to upgrade their fleet, because trust me, Nat really needs to do that, otherwise they're going to significantly end up lagging behind their competition. So with that being said, make sure you've subscribed, we're so close to 1000 subscribers. This video was super short and value packed, so you don't have to wait. 10 to 20 minutes of your time so make sure you subscribe like let me know down below what you guys think and i'll see you guys next time take it easy clocking out for now peace easy